There, there we go. There we have it. We're live. We are, we are alive, man. Excellent. Live and alive. How are you doing, dude? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm getting older, but <laughs> <laughs> as we all are, we are all, yeah. we are all getting older. Eventually, I think there is hundred percent chance that all of us gonna die. So, <laughs> yep. It's... I think Even it's a perfect time. way. I think it's a perfect way to start this conversation. Uh, dude, so you, it's, it's kind of funny because you were the f one of the very first guests on our cafe. Yeah. Believe it yeah. or not. Believe it or not. So it's been, it's been, uh, it's been a hell of a ride. I just wanted to have you back and, and see where you, where you're at, you know, these days. Cause that's, I think you're, I think you're doing well. And I would love to hear a little more about, about what's going on in your life, dude. Yeah. So uh let's see um just got married which is pretty cool um, damn yeah i know a good right? start <laughs> good conversation starter finally happened um and i think last time we were talking like i was still at valve i think yeah you were yeah so i'm back down in california um helping out some dudes at riot with uh some cool things they're working on and uh yeah just enjoying the sun uh, trying not to get eaten by sharks and you know <laughs> just doing doing the fun stuff yeah do you do you like uh um surfing or something you surf? oh yeah I enjoy oh. my surfing hmm. well there you have it there you have it all right all right i am terrified of surfing because i hate sharks and fuck those creatures oh yeah man <laughs> <laughs> and you are in their home <laughs> yep I saw this video uh, not too long ago, where there I think it was drone video from from Santa Monica. Oh, okay. It was like flying over water, and you can see all the surfers, and it was like five or six sharks, like literally super close, <laughs> and nobody just like everyone's oblivious. But because you know, like the way uh, the way Fresnel works, right? Uh, you can see pretty much almost see through when you look directly top down but when you're on the water level you, you get much more reflection so you, you don't really know what's under the surface so there's just a shitload of sharks dude oh yeah dude they're out <laughs> there for sure yeah you just uh try not to think about them <laughs> so uh you're back uh you're back at riot man that's that's really cool oh, not back at riot you're working for riot that's really cool i think uh i think it's moving moving well for you i guess i guess yeah, it's cool. They're uh, it's interesting. They're like this in between, uh, like culture wise. They're like this in between of like Valve and you know a more structured kind of place. So it's been kind of cool to be able to like I don't know bounce around from one extreme to the other. Uh, you know, you learn things and you get to take things with you and stuff. So it's cool. Right, Valve is it's sort of like very I don't know very different, right, compared to. Uh, Riot, obviously, size-wise, it's it's a different company. I mean, let's 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 be serious here. It's those are two different companies. They have completely different focuses and whatnot. But just in just in the terms of uh, yeah, like structure and development and how things are running, right? Is that is that is that a fair thing to say? Yeah, I mean, there's some similarities. I think that uh, you know, Riot incorporates from Valve like a lot of the uh, autonomy stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. that Valve has is there. Um, but they they also do things a little differently uh, where it's a little bit more structured, which uh, I think helps, especially like for people who are newer and stuff to the industry and newer to those kind of situations. Right. Uh, it's kind of good that there's some structure because if you don't have it, it's, it can sometimes be a little stressful for people. Yeah, it can be it can be really daunting. I, I, I remember having a similar switch when I went from Crytek to to uh, to Naughty Dog, which was a reverse switch. You know, it was from very sort of corporate uh, corporate company moving into this sort of like garage, sort of like let's all have fun and do cool games kind of feel, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a definitely different thing and I think uh it's that's actually an interesting topic, you know. I wonder which one you like most or more. Uh you know, specifically for you know, your level of uh of work cuz you have some excellent work, I would, I would Thanks, dare to man. say. I would dare to say I can actually pull it up for people to I guess uh your art station would be the best way to show it, right? 
Yeah, at some point I gotta keep that stuff updated. It's so hard to, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you know it, right? Like you're working all the time, and yeah, it's just hard to keep up with everything. Yeah, I like but, what you're doing there, man. It's just like it's high fidelity, freaking ZBrush, and and um, you know, modeling on like the highest level uh, in terms of the environment modeling is fucking amazing, dude. I love it. It's so competitive, though. Like, it's funny, like. You know, you never think that you're old, but, like, when you actually pay attention to, like, how far the industry's gone in, like, the last few years, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, the w caliber of work is so, so high-end. It's it's definitely really daunting. Yeah, you, you constantly have to keep on your toes and almost, like, yeah, so I, I know already, I got it fucking nailed. Uh, I can I could sit around and just have fun and then you realize like a year or two later there's so much new shit oh you're that's screwed just like, yeah <laughs> that's yeah it's it's crazy it's crazy how fast uh, everything is moving uh it's similar to uh concept art you know i've been saying this quite a lot uh concept art industry is sort of evolving constantly and you know in some places it's, ev it's evolving slowly in other places it's evolving really fast but it's almost granted that a lot of concept concept guys gonna eventually be learning, you know, 3D and doing heavy, heavy 3D. So um, that's for sure. How's um, what ex uh, so so question here? I, I I remember when I was talking with you uh, about Valve, and maybe we could get uh, deeper into that conversation. Just you know, for yeah. anyone who's like, hey, I would love to do a new Half Life or something. <laughs> I don't even know if you guys are. Uh, we're working on it. Obviously, you cannot say because that's probably the the highest highest kept secret. It's like the like the the Coca Cola uh, recipe <laughs> over there. <laughs> over there, <laughs> nobody knows apart from maybe two people. Um, but Valve is a very special place, isn't it? It's it's not like your average uh, video game company. No, it's they do some things like. I don't know. I've had like a lot of. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to like go to a bunch of different places and stuff, and they're at the very top of like the my favorite places to have worked. And a lot of it's because of the way that they develop is so different than any other studio I've ever worked at. Like, there's a right. reason why they are so successful, and it comes down. I think at least ninety percent of it comes down to their development mentality and what they focus on. Like, their artists focus on stuff entirely differently than artists at pretty much any other company and it's kind of set up that way for a reason um and it's obviously it's designed to you know help make customers happy and happy customers mean happy happy revenue right <laughs> so uh, from uh, what i remember you because uh, those who are you know tuning in and listening uh to our conversation uh you were one of the first guests on our cafe and i remember I, f I think i was having you and a bunch of other people we were talking about you know breaking in i think it was a topic of breaking into video games industry and i think you've mentioned uh, a little bit of a little bit about um uh valve uh we were talking about it but i, I remember you were saying that almost everyone or most of the people over there sort of or are almost like project managers in a way like sort of like a project owners where you have to take a lot of responsibility over what you're doing and there's a lot of trust built, built around you but also it means like you you do have to deliver uh cert what's what's being like the you have to set up your own expectations and then deliver upon them is that correct yeah no that's that's pretty spot on like the way i mean everything's structured at Valve kind of in this kind of nebulous fashion like you can work on a team with like four or five guys or guys and girls or whatever and right. everyone's doing different jobs like one day you might be doing programming the next you might be doing game design the next you might be doing art it just kind of like you just kind of have to float around it and, and they allow you to kind of work on any of the things that you really want to work on mm -hmm. but there is that level of responsibility to where like if there's not a good decision behind what you're doing or there you're, you're not focusing on the customer, then, mm -hmm. you know, you probably shouldn't be working on that. And they definitely incentivize people to not work on stuff they shouldn't be working on. Yeah. That makes any sense. Makes a lot of sense. It's almost like, um, 
there's this uh, you know agile develop, uh, development kind of style of working which you know Silicon Valley uses for pretty much most of their apps and products and whatnot uh, called Scrum right so mm-hmm. I, I, I'm guessing Scrum it's almost like a you know bunch of Scrums that are running parallel and you sort of like take ownership uh, do you find it like stressful when when working that way where you you, you know you have a lot of responsibilities that you're taking upon yourself and then you have to deliver or you prefer more like i don't know working in a structure where you sort of like are given uh you know specific tasks that you just follow and and make them happen so it's probably my favorite way to work is kind of the way that valve does Mm -hmm. um it i don't know it's it's not for everyone especially like you know when you talk when people kind of uh, ask like when you're at Valve, like what do you work on? It's kind of like ah, uh, kind of work on everything, right? It's kind of hard for people who are used to like a standard development structure where they're getting evaluated um, based off of like deliverables and pro, you know, kind of decisions that really aren't made by them. Like mm-hmm. they're you know some project leader or whatever. Um, but you know, for me, the having like being able to see like directly into the the entire development process from like the gestation of an idea to shipping it to keeping a live product and all those kind of things. It, you know, it, it's kind of the only way that valve could work to do what they need to do. Right. Um, and you know, there's benefits to it. I mean, it, it's certainly stressful, but the, the benefit, one of the big benefits to working the way they do is their overhead is super, super small. I mean, I think, I mean, like, in terms of develop, developers, I mean, they really don't have that many core developers. Like, the, the the majority of the staff, well, I wouldn't say the majority, but they, a good chunk of the staff is mainly support, right? And mm-hmm. then the rest is, like, the game teams. The game teams are super, super tiny. You know, they're not, like, these huge monolithic teams, which, to me, I think is really good because it, it forces good decision making like and if yeah. and if there's bad decision making it's really easy to like to either change course or to stop the project or whatever that's going on before it goes too far off the rails it's more selective in a way i would say it's just like you have core members of the team and pretty much all of them are acting on their highest capacity and you know pretty much that a person that is sitting right next to you is on the same, if not higher level than yourself in terms of skill set and, um, you know, like abilities to, to deliver excellent products. So I think there, there's something about that. I, you know, there's, there's the saying that you become um, like an average of five people that you're hanging out with the most, right? Mm-hmm. Or the, the, um, the, the five people. I, I don't know who, who came up with this uh, saying or is if it's a, a rule or it's a book i can't f- fucking remember i'm having too much too much <laughs> too much shit on my head to remember <laughs> that stuff but i remember um i remember hearing it somewhere and there's some there's some truth to it because once you like y- you might be you know working really hard and then at some point you just like uh it's just like oh, i'm just gonna you know relax for now for a while and then you see your colleague like next to you just outperforming you dramatically you're just like fuck i have to pick up a slack and and keep going it's 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 demanding but it's it's also very productive riot is different though right like riot is probably the one of the biggest developers in terms of the sheer manpower mm-hmm. um but there's also like completely different structure when they work there uh how did you actually end up working with those guys so Kenny, he, uh, his uh, Carvalho, he's one of the uh, recruiters there, and I, I worked with him back like when I was at Blizzard, like so, like before right. I could drink. Yeah. <laughs> like, <so laughs> I was, like, and uh, you know, over the years, we just kind of kept in touch. And there was a certain point where, you know, Seattle's great, but honestly, the weather is unless you're into the super gray and gloomy, it, it it'll take its toll on you. And that for me, it definitely was. Right. Um, so it was kind of like, well, you know, at the time I was at Valve for like three or four years and I was doing really well. Like I was understanding things really good. Um, but it was like, well, I kind of need to focus on the other part of my life a little bit too. Right. Which is the kind of the, 
mental happy you know sun <laughs> side <laughs> having a little bit of more more of vitamin d <laughs> exactly from nature exactly. no tablets yeah. or vitamins <laughs> exactly so uh you know so that was a big kind of push on it and then honestly like i, I have this thing where like you know you you kind of want to at least for me because time is such a valuable valuable thing um you know, you kind of want to keep pushing and kind of keep moving forward, right? Like, otherwise, you're, you know, you can fall into a habit of just becoming really comfortable and becoming yeah. kind of stagnant. Similar to, I think, what we were talking about just a few minutes ago. And the industry changes and moves so fast. So, for me, it was kind of like this, it was a decision to kind of like go, all right, this is going to be, you're kind of leaving your comfort zone. It's going to be a little different, but you're going to learn something else in the back end as well, right? Like, you're going to come yeah. out probably stronger for it. So, um, so we decided to do it. And, you know, my wife's uh, family, she's all, uh, they're all in Southern California and stuff. So, um, it was, it was made it much easier for that. All my family's out in Michigan. So, it's, uh, the frozen we'll, north. We'll put her away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not much for uh, game art there. You, you just cannot go wrong with Southern California. Like if you, if you're lucky enough to be able to live here, and live yeah. comfort comfortably because it's one thing to live here and the other one yeah. the other thing to live here comfortably <laughs> it's expensive to live here <laughs> so, i mean it's dude just, it is it's so expensive it's insane we've just been talking about this briefly before we started the stream uh like you know San just santa monica where yeah. most of the studios are currently you know naughty dog is over there uh riot game is technically west LA but it's just like literally a block away from Santa Monica um, who else is there there's there's a bunch of films Naughty studios. Dog's out there and, yeah Naughty I Dog mean, Cloud um, Imperial's out there I think too exactly it's Sony Santa Monica used to be there they are now in Playa Vista I believe mm -hmm. which is pretty much the same thing um, like all of the Silicon Valley sort of uh, mantra has moved into that place they call uh Venice Silicon Beach yeah Venice and Marina del Rey they call it Silicon Beach and I'll tell you the moment I moved into West West Side which is you know I, I used to live in Santa Monica for the longest time uh, from from it was like seven years ago when I came here mm -hmm. it was it was a town that felt like a beach town you could like you know move around there was, there was some traffic it was a lot of tourists but it was still like move you could move around Mm -hmm. Now it's just fucking crazy. It was just packed. Just, yeah. just, just so packed. You go on like side streets and it's like 405. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, it's crazy. And, and I mean, prices it, went up. Holy fuck, the prices went up. It's, uh, it's one of the most expensive places in LA, if not the most expensive right now. It's crazy, man, to think about. Because like, you know, like as a developer, especially like when you're younger, I mean, I don't know if you went through this, but like for me, there was a period where my biggest concern was being able to work on cool shit and being able to have enough money to go to a bar, right? Like that was yeah, like yeah. my, <laughs> that was the all encompassing thing. And I mean, you get older, right? And you want to have a family and those kind of things. You start looking at like, is this in an area that I can actually afford? <laughs> like, and I mean, it, those, it's interesting. I'm curious to see like the, where studios go in the future, because I mean, it's so expensive to have these, studios in these really you know big areas and obviously these companies are making a shitload of money but yeah. i mean if you can get somebody to kind of you know get a good salary possibly even work remote like i mean you could do some damage with that you could do some really good things with it especially yeah. you know given crazy visa situations and stuff like that so yeah visas can be a difficult topic someone actually asked about it we actually had an episode um on the art cafe where we had immigration lawyer it's it's the episode where we had immigration lawyer and alex neonakis was over there too if you go back to uh to to uh to the channel and look through the episodes you, i'm sure you can find it we go into details in that but yeah visa situation can be tricky um honestly the like when you look at the pay structure of those studios if you look at the just the number you f you, f you think like holy crap they are paying a lot of money but then when you compare it to the cost of living in especially if you don't want to commute to work, if you don't want to spend yeah. like an hour or an hour and a half to get to work, then you're looking at like very minimal kind of lifestyle where you just pay rent and sort of, you know, have a okay car and can go out 
once in a while. And by the way, in, in LA, you have to have a car. Oh yeah, you unless can. you have shitload of money to Uber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to have a car. There's no public transport whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, they don't believe in that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so crazy, so yeah. crazy. Uh, it's crazy too, especially like compared to like the public transit thing's nuts, man. Because like um, my uh, super, my friend Seth, he's a pretty badass uh, artist, but uh, he. Mm-hmm. You know, we do uh, like lectures and stuff out in Japan, right? So we'll go and do right. like, our demos and shit out there. And the transit system out there is just incredible. Like, I mean, you can get across the entire country like just by rail, right, in a really efficient way. So I mean, it's cool to see. Like, I don't know. I wish the U.S. would adopt better policies like that, just because, man, like, you could sit on a train for an hour, you know, and sculpt or do whatever. Like, you could seriously make things way better. I would. Yeah. Do that in a heartbeat over sitting in, uh, in traffic. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. In the ass. I remember, um, you know, I used to be in, you know, West Side. And when I was working with Naughty Dogs, I had really, I was really close to work. But I was just like renting. The, the, the thing is, like, rent is high. And when I was renting there with my family, we had like shitty one bedroom apartment, which was looking like garbage, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like walls, old wall, like everything's old, super old. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of crazy. You have those prices. It's super expensive. It's super expensive. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. You pay like two and a half k for one bedroom, and it looks yep. like fucking shit hole. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's crazy. I'm like, I don't understand. Um, but I didn't have to commute, so that was great. Because you know, five ten minutes, and I'm out of work. So that was great. And yet, I was talking to friends. You know, they would have a house or something in Orange County, but it would be like two hour drive. You know, mm-hmm. one way. Because the traffic and traffic is getting worse and worse, so I was just like, oh fuck, I don't want to do that. And I did that, uh, did a little bit of commute when I started working for film. Uh, I used to commute to uh, to Burbank, which Holy is, by shit. the way, the, the reverse. The, <laughs> it's the reverse traffic, so it's not it's not bad. It only takes. It feels like it's only taking forty five minutes to an hour. The problem is, it's it's let's say it's a one hour each way. That's two hours a day. If you look at it through a perspective of the whole month you're spending 40 yeah. hours in a traffic in a month and 40 hours is pretty much work week <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so i figured you know what fuck that i'm gonna start working from home <laughs> no i mean the that only totally way makes sense it's the only way it, it's it's harder it's require you to be more sort of you know organized but it's well worth not being in a car <laughs> yeah i mean it's it, it's amazing too because like like for for unless you have like somebody who's super super motivated i I mean like or like really dedicated i mean it eventually it'll it wanes on the employee right like you do that for three four years those commutes you're like uh i don't know if i want to do this anymore so yeah it can get crazy it can get really crazy yeah you, you get tired and it's just like you you might have one of those days where it's just like oh i really don't want to be in a traffic right now <laughs> and yeah. you know like you know it's going to be exactly the same. It's just going to be freaking, I don't know, walking speed pretty much most of the time. And it's then you're brutal. going to have this period of like, oh, it's clearing up, clearing up. And you drive for like a minute and then boom, you're hitting it again. It's just brutal. Yeah, it's, it's fucked up. <laughs> I hate traffic, dude. I hate it. One of the worst things. Do you think, so it's like actually kind of interesting because... It seems to me that a lot of, um, you know, a lot of studios are very centrally located. You know, I, I guess the only really big studios that aren't, I don't know where Valve is exactly, but they are not in like, uh, in metropolis like LA or San Francisco, right? Aren't they? They're, they're in Bellevue, which, I mean, Bellevue is expensive. Like, it's, it's definitely expensive, but it's not, it, it's like the, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's it, it's like the family friendly version of a city, I guess. I mean, right. It, there's like, I mean, there's traffic and stuff, but it's Bellevue is pretty nice. It's just it's very sterile, um, very corporate. <laughs> yeah. Well, another big big one is uh, Epic Games, right? And they are in yep. uh, Raleigh, right? R- Raleigh, North yeah, Carolina, North yeah. Carolina. Which is it's not a big town. Ta- like it's it's a decent town, but it's not like you know la crazy Mm. uh but most of the major studios are either you know either in la or like other metropolis and 
And I, I wonder what do you think... I was, I'm curious, like, where do you think this is going? Because clearly uh, it's just becoming more and more expensive. And that means if you want to get, uh, you know, a skilled worker or someone who is, like, really on the top level, that person's not going to be there, in, you know, working in that studio if they have a chance. Like, if they... If you would, if if you on your level would have to choose, like, fuck, I, I, in order to be in that place, I have to spend almost three, three and a half grand to have a decent home, or commute for two hours. Like, would you, would you choose that job? You, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. What, what do you think this is going? I mean, like for me personally, like I wouldn't choose that. Like, I mean, I don't know, like. It, I don't know. It depends on what you're after, right? Like, I mean, my 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 priorities change every few months, I guess, but you know, <laughs> good. For, good stuff for, though. Yeah. I mean, for me, like it's right now it's about kind of being smart and trying to save money and you just, I'm just getting older, right? That's what you do. Yeah. And you know, like I think if you gave somebody the option, you were like, look, we're going to pay you, I don't know what, 150 grand to live here or live here or, you know, work remote. What do you want to do? And it's like, yeah, you can live in the city or you can like, you know, if I was making the kind of money that I am now, like back in Michigan, holy hell, like <laughs> it would be entirely different. Balling. But yeah, but I mean, you know, it also comes down to like your, uh, your general priorities and stuff. And like when you're younger and when you're single and, you know, you're, you know, just kind of uh, playing around and stuff like it's not a big, not as big of a deal to, you know, spend two or three grand on an apartment, right? Like. You yeah, know, plenty of guys that do it, but when you get a family and you want to start settling down and you have to pay taxes and all, all of those kind of yeah. things, you're like, that three grand can do a lot. <laughs> it gets it gets worse when kids come to play. <laughs> yeah, I'll but. tell you that. <laughs> yeah, because then it's like, fuck, like, can I can I afford this or should I put like some some you know some you know food in my in my in my in my you know kids' uh, mouth. Yeah, so it's becoming a dilemma, especially like, especially when you have to be, you know, some people have choices, and I guess if you're on the really high level, if you work towards that really high level, you you're gonna have choices. Like that's inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, then you can obviously choose where you want to live and if you want to work remotely. But there's a lot of guys that I know and and girls that I know that they just don't have that choice and they sort of have to, you know, make compromises. So it can become crazy for sure. Yeah, I'm curious where this is going because, you know, like looking at Naughty Dog and looking at Riot Games, I don't think Riot Games going to have problems, big problems like that. They're making so much fucking money. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane how much money they make. Um, so I think they're going to be fine for a while. Much like Blizzard, right? Blizzard is, you know, have been so successful with with uh Overwatch recently and prior prior to that with World of Warcraft on which you worked on right you you did mm -hmm. a, quite a quite a lot of work there. Yeah, um, back in the day. They are in Irvine. Irvine is super expensive if you think yep. about it. And um, but still, like I don't think they're gonna be in in any any pickle. But I mean, you know, I think it, a lot of the studios with like it it comes down to like kind of like basically what they're gonna pay people, right? Like I mean, yeah. if if they have to pay a shitload of money in rent and those kind of things, they they pay their employees less, right? Now, there's also that thing to be said about having a nice area to get investors and get people excited about coming in and checking out your studio. Yeah. But, you know, the industry and stuff, especially, like, just development, like, last, like, look at the last, like, five years of development, right? Like, things have changed so drastically. And the change is things get faster and things get cheaper, right? Like, you That's know, true. scan data and all this kind of other stuff, they're all tools to make us faster and to try and get higher visual qualities at a quicker rate. Um, and I mean, I think the, the, the rent and all of that kind of stuff <laughs> applies. I mean, I, like I said this a few years ago and I still see it happening. I, I think it'll go towards more of a model where people work remote. It make yeah. it makes the most sense to me that people would do that. I mean, it's, it's hard to like, if you're not used to it and especially if you're working on a really collaborative thing, it can be really difficult to, to, uh, kind of, remote in and talk and do all those kind of things mm -hmm. um but i mean for me if it's gonna save save some mental stress uh and save some money it, it seems like a good win yeah and you said it you said it correctly like when you start 
when you're like a young kid, you know, or in, in, in your twenties, you really have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I mean, you sh you should you should enjoy living life, and uh, you know, you have to be sort of like it's it's a good idea to be frugal uh, early on, and yet, like not just blow your whole, whole of your twenties into into a dust just because you wanted to have fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's always good to have I, at least that's what I believe. Always good to have some contingencies uh, oh, yeah. in place. But yeah, as you said, it's not a big deal to to rent. But eventually, yeah, like once you get family and whatnot, that that just becomes you know more and more sort of like trying to figure out what which battle which battles should I pick? You know, should I you know still pursue a career and like go you know balls deep there and then you know be with the team and have fun in development, being in the studio, or should I just sort of like try to find an avenue where I can work from home? Uh, save on fuel, like save on rent by being in like cheaper place and more suburbs, you know, um, those are choices that are, can be difficult. Uh, yeah. How, how many years you've been in the industry? I'm curious, because I, I think when we had a uh, discussion last time, I, I didn't actually ask you that. So let me think, I'm terrible with math. Um, so I started doing like 3d and getting like paid for it and stuff when i was in high school so it's like 17 16 17 somewhere around there because i was um i was doing like in michigan like it's all automotive stuff right so right um that's i was working uh with a like a vocational school um and they ended up hooking me up with an internship that ended up paying me to do like cad and designs and stuff like that like so way long ago so i've been doing 3d for 29 so whatever that is 11 years something like that 12 years i don't know wow <laughs> that's a lot of time that's why, I, that's why i have this lovely haggard look constantly <laughs> <laughs> uh, i like your style though with those posters the right <laughs> the right kind of music yeah all yeah. good all good it's i amazing. used to i used to listen to slayer when i was uh when i was a kid that was uh, it was good times, good times. It was super funny. My mom uh, came over to California. She's back in Michigan, and uh, it was the first time she like she's been out here to see the to like you know see basically how I'm doing and those kind of things out on the coast. Um, and uh, she you know she saw our, our condo or whatever, and she she comes in and she goes in my office and she's like, "It's amazing how this looks exactly like your room <laughs> did when you were 14 years old." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Like, laughs> the exact same shit. Nothing so. changed. <laughs> yep, Nothing changed, mom. It's all it's all the same. All the same. Exactly. <laughs> good. At least you're 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 true to your core. So that's good. I Dude, twenty nine. Twenty nine years. That's that's an in, insane amount of time you've been in the industry. Let me let me think. Twenty nine years. Dude, I've been shitting. Well, maybe not shitting my diapers. I was a little older than that. That would be kind of crazy. No, 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 I'm 29. I haven't been in the industry for 29 years. I'm only oh, 29. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 29. And then, uh, so I've only been doing this for like 11 or 12 years, something like that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry. I, 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 I was like, what? Well, you look pretty young for such an old guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't slip past you. Like, I can kind of see it. It looks a little rough. Uh, yeah. So t 12 years is a lot. Uh, it's pretty much, wow. So you started, you started around the same time as i did what it was like 2003 2004 ish yeah yeah there you go i started around the same time yeah the industry was slightly different back then i remember like the the development exactly. teams were much smaller because it was prior to the uh the next gen video games era right that's like was... zbrush was a new thing like the zbrush too like i i remember using like the pot like the the two and a half d painting <laughs> version yeah. of zbrush, ZBrush yeah, was yeah. not the sculpting it was just like sort of like two and a half d sort of canvas on yeah, which that... you sort of sculpted ish i guess that it was kind of weird program do that program change the 3d industry like the level of fidelity like, i i still don't understand how we would do half the shit that we do and the time frames that we do without those kind of programs yeah it's moving on so fast like crap like it's it seems like 12 years 12 years is a lot right now like when you look at the progression of software hardware you know where we were back then and how much it progressed right now i remember driving with like some shitty 
you know big block that was gps that had outdated maps and <laughs> it was it was like super inaccurate you could drive into water if you didn't pay attention like into a river or some shit because the roads weren't there um now it's just like you flip your phone out to your smartphone just type in it just shows you everything ar around it too like oh like you're on the way it, there here's some fucking good in and out on the way the cars oh. drive themselves now yeah what? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> there you what go the hell's going on <laughs> it's crazy but but yeah it's just like 12 years in production cycle it's like in video games it's what like four games for the company mm -hmm. it's it seems a lot but it's not really that much you know but the industry changed so dramatically you know even oh, yeah. from your perspective uh you working as a 3d artist you know you would i guess you started with like what 3ds max maya 3ds max when? 5 <laughs> damn and now you're like you're doing pretty much completely different job right yeah. like it changed so much how how dramatic like in scale of zero to fucking dramatic how dramatic you think the change was over those last 12 years i mean like if you, even if you like look at just like the console development cycle right like so right like mortal Kombat and those kind of games and like on the xbox and stuff the development teams and development just methodology was so fucking different it was like it was an entirely different field and it was also like development like was way looser like especially like working at Midway and some of those companies and hearing, like, what it used to be like to build games, even compared to when, you know, 18, me being 18 or 19, yeah. you know, in college doing that stuff. And it was, it was like, a, it sounded like it was a freaking frat house, right? And even now, it's even more structured. And, I mean, the technology, on the technology side, it's entirely different. I mean, it's just so fast. Yeah. I mean, your it's... cell phone is more powerful than your, like, than the Xbox or, you know, if you think about like from that standpoint, you can do, you can render, you know, you can render PBR on your phone, right? Like, yeah. I mean, you can't do that. Like the Xbox and those, I mean, even the consoles now kind of have a hard time doing that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Cell phone, like the new iPhone is so powerful. It's actually from the specs, it's better than like second or third generations of the computers that I use for work. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that was like, just 10 years ago. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, man, like it's so, it, so insane. The mobile development stuff is that to me is the area that interests me the most. Mm. Um, and it's, I think it's also just like doing larger development after so long. I think you kind of start to go back and be like, Oh, I want to do <laughs> smaller things or more independent things. But mobile development's the thing that really interests me, especially like if you look at like markets worldwide and stuff. Like uh, Japan, China, it, it is mobile. Like that is where the money is on this stuff. And yeah. I mean, Western, West, like Western audiences are very different than obviously Eastern audiences and stuff. But you know, I think for like on the Western side, for us to break into those massive, massive markets, I mean, you know, the mobile development's huge, but also games that scale on a large variety of platforms are massive, right? Like, you know, yeah. games like, you know, League, part of League's part of League's huge success is, you know, it's obviously it's a great game, it's fun, but it's the fact that it can be played on pretty much any system, right? And yeah. you know, like CS is uh, you know, I'd say and Dota is in the same ballpark, right? Those games are designed very deliberately to play on as such a large platform as possible and that's interesting from like a from an artist standpoint because you know when you you know when you're when you get into development and you're you know you're starting off your number one goal is to make shit look as absolutely awesome as possible yeah which you know makes total sense but then you get into a point where you're like well now wait a minute if this thing's gonna look and super amazing and i need to cut out like 33 or to 40 percent of my audience that is you know, half a billion dollars potentially, depending on the, your game, right? Yeah, so yeah. the focus starts to change a little bit. Yeah, that would be a, an easy explanation why when you look at uh, League of Legends or Warcraft or any of those, you know, free-to-play games, why they're not, they don't have the same f fidelity as, I don't know, New Call of Duty or, you know, Uncharted. It's mm -hmm. the, the reason is simple. Like, you, you just have to 
uh, divide resources. Okay, if, if we want to make a game that is very broad and, uh, and you know, uh, reaches all as much of the audience as possible, then we have to put more money into, you know, developing it for other platforms, not just uh, not just console, right? So that's more coders, more more people involved in coding and, and making sure that everything works properly. That also means that the game, because it's not going to be looking great, has to be much more fun, which means you're going to have to have probably best in the in the industry designers mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, story people or whatever, like people that will create a gameplay that's engaging and it's fun and it's balanced, you know? Whereas art just becomes sort of like this, uh, like a beautifying factor mm -hmm. that w it's going to be like, there's a level that is acceptable, that it's not that hard to reach, mm -hmm. but then everything beyond is just a bonus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think and uh, it's hard too, like to find, like for, especially like over the years, like I, I, I get emails a lot from like, you know, from people who are interested in career stuff and. One of the things that's the hardest to find, especially like when you're trying to evaluate like senior level guys and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, you it's it's much easier I think to find people who are super skilled in a single craft. I mean, like you can go on Art Station and you can find if you want somebody who is good at making, you know, schoolgirl ninjas, there are probably five thousand guys that are <laughs> super specific in doing that, right? Like, yeah. But finding people who understand the business and the development side and understanding when and kind of where to put their time and resources and kind of justifying to, as from an art standpoint going, well, maybe this asset, it's not going to look as good as it's going should, or maybe not even should. It's, it's not going to look as good as I could do it, but it's going to work on a multitude of things. That's kind of a hard thing to find. Um, yeah. You know, one of the companies that, you know, again, not to sound like a fanboy, but they had, I think, probably the best interviewing process that I've ever been through was Valve. Their their interview process. I mean, when you if any of you have gone through it, it it's not an easy interview process. And it when you're doing it, you're like, why the hell are these people doing this to me? <laughs> like this is <laughs> is this supposed to be a fun place to work? But it, there's a very deliberate reason behind a lot of it. And it's like you know they have to you you are trying to evaluate people's decision making, which is arguably yeah. the the hardest thing that you can do. Um, and I mean, I think, you know, in our industry is kind of littered with products and stuff that from a visual standpoint, they are just absolutely some of the best out there, right? They're just I mean, like visually the gorgeous, <laughs> but they don't set yeah, but they don't sell, right? Yeah. Or they fall flat. And, it, you know, from a developer standpoint, that that tells me that there's the user base is looking for something very different. And I think that's what makes games and even our film so difficult, right? Is it's not just a single facet thing. You know, you want it yeah. to look good, but you have to reach people in a bunch of different ways, and it's just a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, how hard? How hard is uh, Valve? Like Valve, it, it's a small company, so I'm assuming, as you said, like it's it's a, an extremely difficult thing to actually pass the interview, right? And it's not like uh, they have actual H H R. Is mm -hmm. that true? No, I mean they. Uh, well, I was there. They had uh, they had someone kind of help. They had two people that kind of were helping with like um, administrative stuff. So like your four hundred one k's, your checking right, and right, those kind of right. things. But their whole thing is like you got a problem, you solve it yourself. <laughs> like <laughs> if if I piss you off, you come and talk to me, or you know, I mean, like and I, like I said, for me, that was the absolute best environment I thought for um, for that kind of stuff uh, because it it. As weird as it sounds, it's it stressed me out in a bunch of ways that were really good, um, right? And so, yeah, I mean, I I think that their their whole structure is there's it's, it's there's awesome. This, there's this good kind of stress where you're stressed out because you want to get the best quality, not stressed out because you're getting in trouble, and that's that's sort of like the the best kind of stress you you, you want to be in, where you know you want to you want to pull up pull up the best quality, and it's not an easy task to do, but the, the, this kind of stress kind of propels you to actually, uh, you know, put much more effort than you think you're cap uh, capable of, right? Yep. And I mean, yeah. it's funny too, like when you, especially working at a company like that, like some of the most talented people I ever met in my life were, uh, you know, from working from there. And you, these guys aren't people like talking super, super talented. Um, 
artists, but they don't have art station profiles or do any of that kind of stuff. They're like the hidden ninjas <laughs> of yeah. like of game art. Um, there was a guy that I used to work with. Um, his name's uh, Max Aristov. This guy's a fucking wizard. Like he he can do anything. Like just <laughs> what I'm not even I'm not bullshit. <laughs> like, the, holy hell! I worked with the guy. I was like Jesus. You know, and and there's tons of those kind of people, right? And the thing that's interesting about Valve is not only have they found people that are these super good rock stars, but their decision making and their product focus is really like leaps and bounds, I think, above most what most people do. Right, right, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, it's 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 difficult because like Valve, and I as you're explaining it, uh, it reminds me. You know, Naughty Dog in a in a way because Naughty Dog uh, has probably uh, I, I cannot compare it because I would have to go through the Valve uh, you know hiring process myself. Mm -hmm. It would be hard to co uh, to compare. But I remember the moment I started a conversation with Naughty Dog to the moment it, where I actually landed the job and was hired was like mm -hmm. four or six months. You know, uh, a lot of freaking interviews and. And talks. I remember I was like the moment you you get uh, you, you you get you fly to the company. Most people say like, oh yeah, you you already got a job. You're flying there for on-site interview. That means they're serious and and you're you're probably gonna get a job. Not with Naughty Dog. <laughs> that yeah. means you passed the you, you've passed the test. Now you have to you know you have to pass like the visual test where where they're just gonna drill you for hours on end. Um, I remember when I when I went to Naughty Dog. I literally came to the office around 10, maybe 10.30 a.m. And the interview didn't finish until 7, seven or 8. I was just yeah. constantly talking and talking and talking and just like going through sort of different scenarios and, and different things. Uh, it's it, it was crazy, but it made me realize why they were doing this because, you know, Naughty Dog is not a big company either. They're like, uh, compared to most of the development studios, they are pretty small. Um, mm -hmm. And they just want to make sure that they they hire you know best in the industry, and that just takes a lot of effort uh, to get people. Especially you know if you're flying in from uh, from Europe or anywhere else in the world, it's it's the the cost to relocate you. It's like ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars just to get you, you know, at the door. Yeah, and it's it's insane a lot of insane amount of money to to, to get you there, and you know they want to make sure that they get the right person. So. And yeah, they, I'm sense. sure that it's the same thing. Like they want to make it so it works on both ends, right? Like if you get you get put into a company and you know they really like you, but you're not a good fit for them, or vice versa. It's it's a pain in the ass, right? No one wants yeah. to be in those situations. So like for me, I appreciate companies that grill the shit out of people and be like, "Look, this is what you're getting into. Like you you need to know what the hell you're doing before you jump into this shit because it it'd be a pain in the ass." And I mean, you know, if you're not 100% aware of what you're doing, you're going to be upset and the company's going to be upset and then no one's happy. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you uh, the sort of anecdote uh, from the recruiting process in, at Naughty Dog. I know for a, fa <laughs> for a fact that uh, when uh, Christopher Christopher Balestra was there, he actually recently left the company, uh, one of the uh, co-presidents. Um, he was the guy who would do any kind of programmer's interview. Right, so any any kind of programmer that want to join the team, he would be a person to, he, he would be the interviewer because he is a programmer himself. He actually, I think he wrote the network code for Uncharted Two because they wanted to add multiplayer, and it, it was like towards the end of the process, he wrote it himself, like everything from scratch. It's like, oh, I gotta just write it, and just he just did it himself. He's an ex <laughs> nice. excellent, excellent programmer. He's like really well known in like demo uh you know back in the freaking uh i don't even know how you call that uh that whole industry or you know uh community back in the days where people were just like programming cool stuff and you know sharing online excellent excellent guy um but he would just like you would, if you would have a phone interview that means you have to be ready to do to do coding on the phone like he was mm -hmm. just like all right so i'll read you what i'm doing like some some kind of equations and you just have to read back like what kind of code you would put in personally over the phone 
<laughs> it's just That's like what brutal. That's <laughs> awesome. Insane. Like you get on the call, like, oh, it's gonna be a cool conversation. No, 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 dude, you're coding now. <laughs> dude, I That's... love that kind of shit. Like when the one of the, so like the way the valve part of the way the valve interviews are uh, set up is like you meet with different people throughout the day and they yeah. they just basically grill you. Like one of the guys that ran through mine, like it was, I think it was like my first or second like interview meeting of the day and he comes in and he's like yeah he's like we like your art you know we, we know you can do art so he's like he's like we're not going to talk about any of your art today he's like that's not we're not really interested in that and he's a programmer uh his name's zoid the guy's a genius like he's a human computer and obviously i'm not good with numbers at all <laughs> like <laughs> I, I don't do that stuff and uh you know he was he had me do like a scoring system or whatever and he's like hey explain how this works and you know what try and program it right like try and figure out the logic for it and all that kind of stuff and i have like this just grotesque like numbers equation on the board it looks like something out of a like a beautiful mind and uh <laughs> i get through this and i have this like addition or like this uh um score total at the end of it and he looks at it and he's like you're off by 673 i'm like oh <laughs> okay, and I will go. All right, plus six hundred and seventy-three. <laughs> We're gonna move on. So yeah, man, those are like the best though. Like because I mean, obviously, I think when you're in those situations, they're not expecting you to know everything. Like you, a, like you probably don't ever want to really. Hi- at least for me, I'd never want to hire anybody who knows everything because they're not gonna get yeah. any better. You want people to kind of improve, but it really is kind of like how do you react in those situations, right? Like if you're like super like cause people handle stress differently right yeah and i mean if you're crunching and you know you have you know literally you are making decisions and choices that cost millions and millions of dollars right and if you can't handle that or you freak out like they definitely want to know that before they put you in a position that could hurt the company or hurt the fans right yeah yeah in in those kind of companies where you have a lot of responsibility and I'm learning it personally, you know, running, uh, you know, running Learn Squared with, with Andrew and Ash is you are going to fuck up. Like everyone does. Everyone make mistakes. And uh, that's a natural thing to do. Now, the way you are being judged is, as you said, like how how you react when a fuck up happens, you know, when something goes wrong and you're expected to be on the highest level. Like what is your response? And, and it is so critical and it's I think in you know in most cases it's more important the way you respond to stressful situations like that uh, it's more important how you respond versus uh, what's your skill level because you can be an excellent artist for instance right mm-hmm. and if you cannot handle pressure of a really rapid deadline so like for some whatever reason something's not working we have to redesign something really quick has to be done by tonight that means you're fucking working till early morning um how do you react to that are you gonna be just like no i can't like i i I cannot do it like fuck you i cannot do it like that that's a red flag for most the companies and you know skill and uh, the quality of your work can always improve right you can always get better at that but you, you want to me- be sure that you're rock solid when it comes to you know like ownership and being able to sort of like pull your boot- bootstraps and like all right it- it's a shitty situation it- it's a fuck up or whatever like or a deadline but let's just do it like let's go through like every single thing one by one instead of just freaking out Let's just make it happen. I think uh, I think that's what you know. I I like it personally mm-hmm. when I have responsibility like that, and I, I'm pretty sure you you do as well. Did you th- did that come to you with the uh, with the experience? Did you, were you were you in favor of this kind of workflow or development uh, throughout most of your career, or that's something you sort of like grew into over over years? Um. Well, I don't know. Like this kind of development, like it it fits me well because of like i'm an unorganized mess <laughs> so <laughs> it, it it as weird as it sounds it works really good with like my add and stuff so it, it's not stressful to me actually it's really kind of calming right um, okay. and uh you know but i i do remember distinctly like you're talking about like being stressed out and freaking out and reacting to things i remember 
like my friend said, he's taught me so much, but when he was my supervisor at one point and we were working on, it was, God, I don't even remember when it was one of the wow cinematics and one of the, like the character teams were backed up or whatever. And he's like, Hey, I need you to go and do this thing. Right. And at the time right. I was just specializing in doing environments. Right. I was like balls deep into doing that. That's what I was focused on. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this. This isn't what I do, you know? And he literally he pulled me aside and he's like, look, he's like, this is a growing opportunity for you to learn something that you're not comfortable with, that you're not going to be good with. And you, but even if you don't know how to do something or you can't do it, the, 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 the answer is never, I can't do something. The answer is I can learn this or I can get better at this or I can try and yeah. fuck it up, but I'm going to fuck it up until I get it right. Yeah. And so that was a super, super big, like, I think, uh, push down that direction of just kind of like just handling shit yeah it's uh, it's it's always like better to say let me let me try it and see see if it works rather than like no it cannot be done because that's probably the worst way of of dealing with problems yeah i agree with you it's it's it can be tricky it's 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 something you just have to learn with time and obviously you know it comes to to some people it comes you know right away like you said, like for you, it, it's it, you know maybe because of your ADD or whatnot, it's 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 more calming. For me personally, it's not calming. It's super stressful, and I know it's like I I get scared personally when when uh, like there's too much going on. I feel like it's I'm drowning. It's overwhelming, mm. but I also know that, uh, and I've learned it over time that in those kind of situations it's like what else are you gonna do like you can just give, give up and just fucking ah uh, and whatever right mm -hmm. or you can just all right let me let me fucking try doing doing it anyways right what the hell like what's the worst that can happen it's not like i have a fucking jaguar or tiger jumping on me from some bushes and i'm about to die right it's I'm moving pixels and doing ones and zeros and the worst that can happen is I'm just not going to be a good at this one particular job, but my life is not ending uh, just yet. Right. So uh, no, dude, yeah, that's totally spot on. And yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing too. Like I was thinking about this the other night, like I'm doing a bunch of, uh, I'm taking some time just to learn a bunch of shit that I never do. Right. So like programming stuff and those kind of things. And, you know, I was, super fucking pissed i was actually talking to anthony earlier he's <laughs> dude such a calming guy I was, <laughs> I was like super pissed i'm like fuck this i don't want to do this shit this is stupid i don't know why any of this is working and you know he's he's laughing he's like you know this is the first time you've done this right so like isn't it supposed to be hard you know like we forget that i think a lot right yeah. like <laughs> especially like, so when true. you're super comfortable with stuff and you're like i'm gonna do something new and it's like you're going to do something new. It's you're straight up doing it new. <laughs> like it's not, yeah, you're not going to be gonna, good at it. It's going to suck. It's going to look like garbage to start with, but eventually you'll get it. It takes time. What do you think? Um, I, I want to kind of loop back a little bit uh, because we were talking about how industry is uh, changing and moving. And, and this is kind of interesting what you're saying because uh, you are basically trying to be on the forefront of what's going on, right? Like it's not, that, all right, I've done it. I know how to use ZBrush. I know how to use 3ds Max. Boom. I can just move on, right? Mm -hmm. And just live my life. No, yeah. you're you're constantly trying to improve, do new things, uh, you know, learn new things. Uh, how important do you feel? And I, I, I want to really stress it out because I know, I know your opinion about it already. But how do you feel uh, how important it is for people to understand, like, look, you have to really pay attention to what's going on in the industry and be a person that learns and, and really, really learns and is quick at learning. It's not just like, uh, not only not only you are, um, you, you can learn something, but you, 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 that's your probably the best skill in terms of, you know, being viable in the industry, the ability to, you know, drop what you're doing right now and be able to pick something new and 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 start learning it's vital dude like i, I mean it, i don't know like it, to me it's the i mean that's part of your job <laughs> like if you can't <laughs> do that i mean you, you you have to fundamentally do it and i mean it because 
and I get it, right? Like at a certain point, you know, you're doing a bunch of overtime, you're tired. Like it's so easy to get to the into the position where you're like, I'm doing my job, I'm going home, and I'm not fucking learning anything more because, you know, yeah. I am getting paid what good money here, and you know, I can do X, Y, and Z. But eventually, something happens. Either the money runs out, the business suddenly changes, the industry changes, and then you're you're on your ass, and you have to learn something quick, right? So for me, I've just adopted the mentality of just being like look i'm just gonna learn as much shit as i can it yeah and it also it for me it just makes me happy right like i like to learn a bunch of new shit like you know and i mean you use all the cad software too i mean like that stuff i mean it's it's an old school way of, i mean you're using it right now actually now that i look up <laughs> <laughs> Um, yep. You know, it's an old school way of working, but it's fucking awesome. It's new and it, and it's it's a different way of approaching things. And it's just as viable as poly modeling or anything else, but it's a new way of doing things. And, yeah. you know, like a lot of the designs that you, Vitaly, Gabriel, that, that you guys do and stuff, those, those robot designs, like I come from like a sub D background, right? Like, so yeah. that shit's a nightmare to do, right? Like you would yeah. never even attempt to do half of those designs, but in the CAD world you can. And like for game people, it's super easy to take that stuff and translate that into game art. So, I mean, yeah, it's just part of the whole learning and growing experience. And you'll find that like, at least for me, like I learn the most when I start doing shit that I'm not particularly good at like some of the most in terms of like my personal art some of the stuff that's helped me the most are like the personal studies like that i'll do like on anatomy or yeah. if i you know go and try and build a game or something Mo i you know i get paid to sculpt rocks and you know teach people software shit but dude you want to learn something try and sculpt like you know a bunch of leg muscles or like your skeletal <laughs> system it's it's a shitload of work right yeah it's and i think nightmare. the same thing is for the uh character guys right is going over to the other side and seeing what you're doing and stuff it just keeps pushing you and i mean that's kind of the expectation i think now because the more and more like especially for seniors and principals and those kind of things um the expectation is that you know they're they're going to be paying you really good so they're going to expect you to do a lot right like if you think yeah. of it in the same sense like if you were building a house right and you have to have a carpenter come in or you know you're going to pay the guy a lot of money. You want him to be able to do a lot of shit and do it well, right? So yeah. yeah it's kind yeah. of the same thing from a company standpoint. Yeah, you don't want to have a person that you pay uh, to do one thing and then like, oh, I cannot finish it because you have to hire someone else for that minutia. Like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's expensive. And like, I mean, especially when you start doing your own businesses and stuff like that, you start to really understand how much shit actually costs. And you're yeah. like, oh, this is why people get pissed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, the moment you start hiring people to do work, that's when it's when it becomes really crazy because it's just like, fuck, it costs it costs so much money. Oh yeah, it costs a lot of money to get that shit done, and it's like, damn it, and it's like, it's easy to sort of like disregard and you know like ah whatever, I'm just gonna do the job and blah blah. But the the one you're you're actually hiring and you're on the other uh, side of the spectrum. You start to realize, fuck, if I have to put it out from my pocket, that's just becoming an issue because it's just so expensive to actually do even the most, uh, you know, unimportant or, or, or small tasks. It's just like takes a lot of time and effort because it's like it's one thing. OK, like if I if I buy a car, you pay X amount of money and then you have a car. Right. But when you're hiring people, you have to assume that some things are not going to be done well and mm -hmm. somewhere along the, the road you might actually experience a fuck up and you're going to have to start over and then all the money you had for that one thing got already spent and now you have to <laughs> you have to uh, do it again and what now you know so yeah it, it, it's definitely taking taking a toll when, especially when you when you're learning it as as you're running a business or a business or something but it's vital i think what you said is it's really important you, you always have to be uh, trying to learn new things and be sort of on top of your game because otherwise you're just going to be left behind. It's It, it kind of loops back to this idea, and I spoke about this before on, a, on, a, on Art Cafe, which is how industry has changed. And we, 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 we mentioned this already over the last 12 years. As you said, like 12 years ago, companies were smaller, right? Uh, ZBrush was, wasn't even there. And now it's like it's it's a completely different you know, thing the the things you were doing twelve years ago, 
they're still viable, but for like if you would want to have, uh, you know, looking at any of your work, uh, you know, those insane, you know, wall features or, you know, amazing, amazing environments you've done, a lot of that stuff would be impossible just just to do it only with, let's say, uh, you know, 3ds Max, right? Yeah, fucking nightmare. <laughs> Be fucking, yeah. <laughs> fuck that shit. I don't. Well, that do shit's that. poly modeled, so. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, it, it, it's that stuff's uh, poly modeled. All right, but. it's it's only because you are fucking insane. That's that's why you're well, you have this sort of uh, insane amount of you know quality that comes out of your work. So. Well, I mean, dude, it. it's funny. Like, it's like I was, I was talking to one of my friends the other day about this. Like, like the I'm, I'm sure you do this too, right? Like, the way you do personal work is different than the way you do production work, right? Like, yeah. I mean, it just it is. Like, you're gonna cut corners. You're gonna do all kinds of shit. So, it's like, some of the stuff like I'll do, like if it's like the baroque stuff or whatever, and it's like you're poly modeling it. There's like, like there's like five or six other ways that are way more efficient than poly modeling, right? To get yeah. that shit to get that done however for me it's like a weightlifting thing right like that's like my one of my gyms right so like i'm you know if i need to get faster at poly modeling that's a great way to do it is to find something god awful to do it and figure out how you can do it in a fast way so you don't have to spend a million years doing it yeah 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 that's true yeah dude it's uh it's it's a pickle like you ha always have to be on top of it but if you have the right approach i think you're you're gonna be fine and, you know, I, I get this, uh, you know, this is kind of interesting because I get this question a lot, like, why would you learn this or that? And I mean, this, the answer is simple. You want to stay viable. And y if you can stay ahead of the curve and sort of like put yourself ahead of the curve where you're always on top of things and you're trying to improve and constantly learn, uh, it's, it's going to be much easier for you in terms of the future and your viability as an artist in the future because the things are moving so fast, right? And totally. I, I've been saying this a lot. If you're a concept artist, start learning 3D now. Like, don't wait. Uh, it's super important for you to know it because the world is moving towards the VR. And I don't know if the VR is going to be a big, big thing or AR or maybe there's going to be a new thing that comes along the way. But the interactivity of uh, of the VR headsets already are so good mm -hmm. that you know there's a lot of money being put into it. So there is the, the job, the jobs in like the industry around VR is growing, uh, whether it's VR, AR, or anything, mm -hmm. anything, anything like that. And if you know how to um, model in 3D and and how to actually create concepts with 3D, it's gonna be a no-brainer to move on, to move to to like switch to VR because right. You just set up your scene in Max or whatever, and it's already there. You just have to, you know, press render, and you can render it in 360 as well. So, yeah, it's crazy. It's it's super. It's kind of a cool time to be playing around with stuff because, I mean, you know, you talk, you were mentioning the VR stuff, right? I mean, who knows what is going to go on with VR? It's a new thing. It, it's you know, there's all kinds of crazy things, but you know that. If it's not VR, it's going to be something else. There's all of these kind of, I mean, the industry doesn't stop just because you suddenly get comfortable with something, right? Yeah, so. exactly. Nobody cares about you. Indust industry cares about <laughs> the profits that it can bring. And, Dude, and that's the so products, true. And like, the that products, is so yeah. true. Yeah, it, it's all about the product, uh, you know? It's you, a business, right? It comes down to, I mean, the shit you do at home in your spare time, that's your fine art, but you're getting paid for it, man. That's a whole other ball game. Yeah. Do you ever pay attention to like other industries, I, even something as mundane as I don't know, like social media? You know, mm -hmm. MySpace and, uh, and like how how the whole MySpace was created and then how it went down, and you know where where Snapchat is right now. They had they had yeah. like the 2.5 or 2.2 billion dollar loss in the first mm -hmm. quarter. Um. And it's for me personally, and I, I would love to hear your opinion about it, but for me personally, it's like, it's a reminder, you know, others, other industries as different as they are, they still resemble same qualities when it comes to, you know, business Oh yeah. Uh, with our industry. You know, there's, there's certain rules that apply to pretty much everything when it comes to business. And when I, when I look at the Snapchat, for instance, like I'd never personally used Snapchat. I, I found it like not as intuitive maybe i'm just too old right but there was one thing that people were enjoying in snapchat really well which is 
uh the the stories right you know the mm -hmm. ability to actually do like a 30 second 20 second uh story and you know share it with with friends and that's what what made snapchat really popular but now instagram has it and instagram mm -hmm. has all the other features as well and facebook is introducing it too and i i believe even twitter was doing something like that i i, I can't remember but i don't think it's a coincidence that you know there's a big profit loss over there as soon as instagram releases something similar where you mm -hmm. already have product that does something else and now it becomes superior because it can do, it can do both things at once you know yeah and it's it, it's for me it's a fresh reminder because it makes me understand okay if the business reacts that way i have to think about myself as a business too yes. what if what if i just be painting and painting and painting and then everyone and then 3d becomes so easy that someone can just do the job 10 times faster and you know produce 10 times better quality by just doing it in 3d and it's slowly moving that direction right mm -hmm. yeah. no totally you're spot on with that i mean nothing stays uh in the same spot and i mean honestly like to be as literal as you can i mean no, no one stays on top forever right like yeah i mean you can be a rock star one day and you know you're gone tomorrow right yep <laughs> um and that i mean but that is that's also i think like for me i kind of try to always remind myself that because it, it helps me at least as weird as it sounds to not get freaked out about the little bullshit um you know like i, I right. think it's pretty common for i mean fuck dude it happens to me all the damn time you know you have to catch yourself when it happens but it's so easy to get intimidated or worried about what every other artist out there is doing. And I mean, it's maybe not even just artists. I mean, you extrapolate it to anything, but this is an art podcast, so we should probably talk about art. Sure. <laughs> talk about anything, dude. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, for sure. It's so easy to fr get freaked out. But that, if you can, like, if you can kind of turn that off and not, and or use it, you know, as uh, kind of a thing for motivation or at least for a chance to learn, you're going to be in a pretty good spot because if you just if you get paralyzed by just kind of fear you're never going to finish anything you're never getting anything done yeah you know it's it's interesting i guess that's that's true and yeah i i, I yeah it's absolutely true you you don't want to get paralyzed you don't want to get dis you don't want to be discouraged by the fact that something just is hard and difficult i used to think that way personally and it it changed for me the moment uh i started actually learning more you know <laughs> I started paying attention into where it, where industry is and who's doing what. When I'm looking at what Vitaly is doing, for instance, today, and when I'm looking at what Ash is doing today and what other like amazing artists are creating, there's no magic in it for me anymore because I already know how it's done. And I know mm -hmm. I can learn it. I know there's a way where I can just sit down and do it. And, and eventually I'll learn enough for, for, for myself to actually be able to do it. I'm not going to be as fast as those guys. I maybe not going to be as good as those guys. You know, that would be, that would be a stretch and that's sort of like uh, an ignorant thing to, 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 to think that you can be as good as them, uh, you know, in a matter of, of, I don't know, weeks or months, whatever. They're spending much more time on, 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 on specific things. Or even looking at what you do uh, with with 3d right like when i look at those rock formations that you create or you know zebra stuff five years ago three years ago for me it was magic like fuck i i would never be able to do that it's just like it's too difficult it's too hard but now we know that if you spend enough time and you do it step by step you can learn it and i don't think there is there is ever a time where it's too late and i want to hear your opinion about it too but for me it feels like as you get older you obviously get slower, right? I mean, mm -hmm. your body is not as as fresh, your mind is not as sharp, but you still learn. You still your brain still functions, and you can still, you know, apply your knowledge, especially experience, on learning certain uh, other things uh, prior to learning new things, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, like, I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head, right? Like, if you're super into learning and you just kind of keep it up, you're going to be fine. I mean. And I, you were talking about like being the best, at, you know, or Tali and those guys being the best at everything, you know. I think, and it, this is a natural thing. Like we we enjoy what we do, and it tends to be a fairly competitive thing. But yeah, 
it isn't a bad thing if you're not the best at something, right? It's not a bad thing that there's someone yeah. else who's like a fucking rock star at, you know, X, Y, and Z. And it, for me, like, it's an opportunity to learn, right? Like, I get so fucking jazzed when I get to go, you know, when I get to hang out with Vitaly or go to, you know, hang out with Fausto or any of those guys. Because I know I'm going to fucking learn a shitload of stuff. Like, anytime yeah. I hang out with Seth or whatever, he's like, hey, check out the sculpt I'm working on. And it's like, oh, fuck, dude, how'd you do that, right? Or, and it's vice versa. It's it's all chances to learn. And it's yeah. not, for me at least, and I, th- I think it was probably my mid-20s, I got to this point where I was just like, it's not, it's not a fault of not knowing things it really for me it, it becomes a a negative thing when i choose not to try and learn something yeah because th- then sense. you're like regret like fuck like i wish i tried it you know Th- that's the worst yeah. thing where you 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 don't do it because you don't want it and then you rec- regret not doing it i found it well, like yeah it's it's the worst thing and i don't know if like film does this a lot but i see this a lot in like in games and stuff especially with like you know just game artists in general like there's like the there's this mentality of sometimes like oh i can't do this this is cheating or you know or like using a certain software or technique that's like hey yeah. this is it's like dude it's not cheating man <laughs> like, <laughs> nope. if it makes your life easier that is a good thing or if it you know gets you there 50 percent of the uh the way faster or if yeah. it helps you get to the end uh, goal quicker there is a what was his name? Brad Berg uh, from Pixar. He said um, it was a when he was uh, doing the uh, gosh, what, the Incredibles. Is it the Incredibles or yeah, Incredibles? Um, it, the making of. He said at one point he was talking about like just production and like how to you know basically build a movie. And he goes, you know, at one point you're going to suddenly realize that it's not about trying to make everything at a hundred percent. It's about trying to figure out what needs to be at 100%, what needs to be at 50%, what needs to be at 70%, and yeah. just kind of balancing that. Um, and I, when I got to that, when I started to understand that a little bit more, and that combining with like just super being into learning and just keep pushing on that aspect of just keep trying to learn as much shit as I can, yeah. um, it eliminated a ton of fucking stress for me. Yeah, it's it, it, the moment you start learning, or you, you really like just not give up and say like oh it's too difficult that the moment you actually sort of like submit yourself that y- you're not the best yeah like this is not your avenue you're gonna have to spend you're gonna have to relearn everything or start from scratch but hey eventually you'll get there you know like eventually uh you'll get good enough to actually make this this new skill useful for yourself and i think uh i think the best approach uh f- i found is uh apply yourself to learning new things as a supplement to what you already do right so for instance when i'm learning cad software when i'm learning how to do like design design aspects of that in cad right uh i'm learning it because i know it's already useful it's going to be useful it's already is because i already did it in production and it's going to be useful in production because not only now i i have like 3d assets that i can reuse and Mm -hmm. and make my my workflow so much faster because like i have tons of new stuff that i can you know combine together in a completely different way and now i have completely different design uh but also it's just like from a work perspective i can show it in so many different angles to the director and he's, he's he's gonna see the work in a completely different angle too like okay in 2d drawing it, it would look awesome and it would be a solid concept, but then they would hit that barrier when they would try to translate it in 3D and that's where mm-hmm. it become problematic. And now you're sort of like sol- solving that problem and therefore, you know, streamlining the, the whole process for them as well. So, but yeah, I, I feel like applying it to your own work and, you know, maybe maybe doing things the way Vitaly does, uh, not going to get you far but only if you're going to try to be him. But if you learn the things like how Vitaly does it or how David Lesperance does it or how Maciej does it, right? You're not going to be them, but you're going to have a new tool in your tool bag that you can use for whatever you're trying to present by yourself. So I feel that's uh, that's important. And yeah, dude, well, we had you- a... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, good. No, I was just going to say, I mean, it comes... It, like, you were kind of hitting on it, like... It's and this is why I think it's good to be kind of broad, but like the three D with the concepting, right? You're broadening kind of the language that you're speaking, basically. Yeah. And with um, you know, like with artists and stuff, 
like for me, understanding and learning some like programming and stuff helps me with my job because I have to interact with programmers all all day long, right? Like if I can't speak their language, it makes it harder to learn, which kind of or makes it harder to communicate. So it's just about kind of, um, you know, I don't know, spreading out as much as you can. Yeah. Oh, dude, there's, there's questions. Yeah, I gotta I gotta get into them right now. Actually, I was I was about to say before before you know before you finished uh, that um, yeah we've we've had quite an interesting conversation come out out of it. I love it. You know, like I love uh, where you know uh, talking about the industry just randomly turns into this, this this topic that we could go on and on about. You know, that's pretty cool. Totally. That's been dope, dude. It was dope to yeah. have you back, and uh, and yeah, it's it's been it's been fucking amazing. You you've been killing it, and I love your work, dude. I love appreciate it, it man. And there's likewise, a of, there's a lot of like that old school uh, part of it that I love, but there's also like you know knowing that you are a person that always try to uh, tries to learn new things. That that's really exciting. So uh, that's cool. All right, let's jump into some questions. There's there's a bunch of them, and uh, and then wrap it up. So. Boo, boo, boo. All right, let's start with Eden. Uh, uh, obviously, you, you enjoy to do personal and production work to benchmark your skills and improve. But what is the thing that has been on your mind in terms of goals you want to reach? Uh, so, like, I think, like, I don't know, like, I want to build my own game. <laughs> That's that'd be kind That's of That's a big one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like, okay, so when um, I had a friend when I was starting off, like, he, he, the thing that his advice for me was super, super valuable, and it was to kind of focus in on more specific things starting off. And the reason why I kind of tell people that is, is you know, focusing in on kind of a more specific thing starting off um, just helps your focus because there's just so much shit to learn for any one given thing that you have to start in one area, I think. Because if you just kind of go, I'm going to go super broad, I mean, holy hell, dude. I couldn't imagine just trying to <laughs> jump into this field and just go, I'm going to learn everything at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And have fun with it, too. Like, that's, like, the biggest thing. Like, especially if you're doing this shit, like, in your spare time or you're, like, doing it when you get off of work, you damn well better be having fun with it. Because, like, if not, there's probably better things you could be doing with your time. Uh, 
Oh, hey, Ryan. Or, hey, wait, you're uh, muted. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. OBS. It. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Hawkins right told me, he's like, he's like, you're talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened. I, I must have, because I have, you know, as I'm running those streams, I'm always trying to apply something new and something fresh and, and make them better. But it must must have been some kind of shortcuts that I've applied, and I maybe hit it accidentally. Uh, it's one of those things where you, when you have a producer with you, that would be you know a no brainer because he he would just fix it right away. You wouldn't even discuss it. But I'm sort of like a one man orchestra here, talking with you, doing some work, and looking at chat and <laughs> trying to answer oh, yeah, questions, man. focus on discussion. So it's all good. It's all good. It should be fixed now. Um, yeah. Anyways, I've I've. Gosh, I was saying that, yeah, just, just do it step by step and uh, pick one thing, get good at it, and then move on. And then if you, you know, you, as you said, like, you, you don't want to be in a situation where you hate something. You, you want to have fun doing it. And if you cannot have fun doing something, then you might as well do something else, you know? And I mean, like, you know, starting off, like I said, starting off like as a generalist or as a something kind of specific is good. And then, you know, you branch out and do whatever the hell you want. Like, you know, that's how you learn <laughs> is by, you know, jumping around and stuff. So just because yeah. you start off in one area doesn't mean you have to stay there. Right? Exactly. Yeah. It's it's like progression. Like eventually you, you start somewhere and then you you learn it enough to move on and start learning something new. And apply it's like it's like you want to build a house right and you need you need tools like you're gonna start with a nail and a hammer right and then you yep. figure out like oh I want my my logs and my you know my rebars to be shorter or you know more trim then you will buy a saw and, and, and start you know like adding tools uh, you know step by step as you're learning and, and and realizing what exactly you need specifically for you that works for you so yeah definitely uh, do you think uh, traditional 3D is doomed because of VR? Uh, so if you don't know how to work in VR, you you won't be hired. You know, I I don't know. Like, I'm not really into like the whole doomsday thing. I think that like <laughs> I don't know. I I think it it's just something to learn, right? Like, there's technical requirements that you need to learn for working in VR, just right. like there's technical requirements for working inside a mobile. One isn't going to push anything out. Of, I don't think it'll push anything out of the industry. And I think more options for the consumer to engage with what we do is a good thing. So I, I, I think it's just a beneficial thing all around. And if it takes off, great. And, you know, if it doesn't take off, there's a bunch of people that had work while they were, you know, figuring out if it was going to be successful or not. So that's a positive, too. Yeah. And one of the things that is important to be mentioned is even though vr is moving moving in even though i'm saying learn 3d because it's important and you have to realize that it's it will apply to majority of the industry but not to everyone because you might think traditional art is pretty much useless in entertainment right it's it's you, you if you work for video games or film you're not going to be a traditional artist per se but you might be good traditional artist and have your YouTube channel or, you know, really successful social media, uh, you know, network uh, or, you know, profile. And you might be making a living by just creating your own stuff, you know, like selling prints and, and uh, you know, being su successful that way. So there's, there's ways for, there's always a way for pretty much anyone to, to make a living out of what they do and they love doing. Uh, it's just a matter of on on how excellent you are in it, you know. And if you're excellent in something and you you drive towards that excellence, then you'll definitely get by really well. So, uh, but yeah, in terms of VR, you know, personally, you know, you work in 3D. Uh, the VR is is just really how it's rendered, mm -hmm. and that, that's it for now. It's just how it's rendered. And I know I, I've seen like Dominic Quack and some other guys working with the VR sculpting. I'm pretty sure the experience uh, is different in terms of like how different results you can get, but the end result is it's th it's still a 3D model, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter like how it's created; it's, it's still a 3D model. So it, both both techniques apply. It might change, but I don't think it's a rapid change or rapid enough change for us to be worried, at least for mm -hmm. now. So, 
Uh, let me read maybe one more question and then, uh, or two more questions and then we'll wrap it up. How about that? Yeah, yeah. And if I missed your question, guys, sorry for that. I mean, uh, we just have to, you know, I have to, I want to be, I want to be careful about how much time I'm stealing from you, David, and also <laughs> how much time I do have myself before I get back to work. But, um, let's see. Um, let's see. That was a question here. Here, I'm just scrolling through the chat to read them. Uh, have you ever played with Unity and uh, drop your asset into the software uh, to come up with concept art or camera views, compositions, look development? Yeah, I mean, it. It's I. I use Unreal primarily just because I like okay. the rendering and the lighting mode better. But yeah, it's the exact same thing. Um, especially because you can take FBXs out. <laughs> So you can do all kinds of cool uh, shit with getting shots and stuff. Um, but in terms of, you know, if I'm going to do something like inside of Max, like I got a pretty beefy station. So like I can, you know, pretty much do anything I need to do in terms of running, you know, progressive tracing or whatever in pretty much real time anyway. So it it just depends on what I'm doing. Yeah. But, Cool. All right, I'll, I'll read one more question and we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. That's a good one, though. Um, the last question is... Uh, it's actually an easy one to answer. Do you, <laughs> do you, <laughs> do you have good. to know... Do you have to know somebody at Valve or Naughty Dog to get a job as a 3D environment art or applying with a decent portfolio is good uh, good enough? You just have to bust your ass like anyone else there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I'll always go, um, you know, I, I would love to hear your opinion, but I'll, you know, maybe start with, with this very simple idea, your portfolio, it, it, it's pretty much all that matters, not connections. Connections can help to accelerate the process of you getting hired to those companies. But if your portfolio is not there, that like, that's, that, that's the groundwork, uh, that you have to have done. Like that's the... That's the foundation on which you have to stand before you even start to reach out to you know to those companies. Well, you can oh, reach yeah. out sooner, but yeah, you wanna you wanna be sure that your portfolio is great. Yeah, and I think the other thing too is like if you're applying to a bunch of companies and stuff is, you know, and I always tell people this is just to be okay with rejection. <laughs> like, oh yes, you are. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You know, I, the most talented people in the world get told that their shit sucks at some point, so just deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Because, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, man, you, it, it's literally just doing the best you possibly can. And eventually somebody will find your stuff online and give you a shot. You know, you just got you have to just keep at it. You just kind of have to keep getting up every time you, you kind of get knocked down with it. Yeah, like if you if you apply and you don't hear back, it, mu it, it means most likely that it's just not good enough. And you have to try harder and spend another six months or so like really busting your your ass to get uh get better and and more you know just get better generally uh learn new things and and increase the quality of your work and be just be honest with yourself like everyone has ego right in in a way everyone has a, has an ego it's just a matter of how you like with that ego how you work with that ego are you is it going to basically stop you from from learning new things and, and becoming better or is it going to be this this ego thing where I just don't accept the fact that I got rejected therefore I need to work my ass better because this is what I need to do right yeah. like if, if it if it powers you to become better and and really learn then yeah that's that's a great way to go um, dude it's been fucking one and a half hours of, oh shit of us talking can you imagine That's, that? Time is flying. I know. I got a model done. I'm stoked. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Times. You're doing some work for client, huh? You know it. You know no it. That's for the you know it. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, experimenting with some some of uh, new things that I've learned today on the Twitch stream with Curtis Chan from oh, uh, dude, Fusion nice. 360. So trying to apply those and learning and fucking failing, trying to do shit and starting over. Basically, that's that's my process where I just do it fail do it again fail until i get it until, I, I, until it. I get it so uh that's something to, nice to do in the spare time uh it's it's usually really helpful to do those things but this process is nice because uh 
it allows to do a lot of cool things uh, if it's set up correctly. I feel like it's not set up correctly, but fuck it. Anyways, all right, guys. Uh, it was nice, uh, nice to have you, man. Uh, I've, I, we should have a follow-up conversation somewhere down the road, and you know, go go deeper into some of those subjects because those those are intriguing. I think we could have like an hours-long conversation about those. Absolutely. But either way, it was nice to catch up with you, man. And uh, I'm I'm glad to hear uh, everything's working out really well for you. Uh, congrats on the you know new job at Riot Games. That's a big company, and I had a pl pleasure to work with those guys. They're amazing to work with. And yeah, anyone who joined us today, uh, thanks for for being live. Sorry for a little hiccups towards the end with my mess up on the <laughs> on the shortcuts. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think it went pretty well, and uh, yeah, it was was fun, dude. Awesome, man. Thanks. It was a blast. Yep. All right, guys, I'm uh, going to wrap it up here. Thanks for, for being here, and uh, cheers. Till the next time. Peace, guys.